Two Dimensional Vectors, Level 13. In this video, we will go over how to solve distance and bearing problems. In the fields of surveying and navigation, the bearing of a line L is the acute angle formed by a fixed north south line and the line L. The notation used to designate the bearing of a line begins with N or S for north or south followed by the number of degrees in the angle, and ends with E or W for east or west. All bearings are measured in a horizontal plane. For example, the following bearings will be denoted as follows. The bearing of point B from A will be pronounced as 40 degrees east of north. Notice that we start on the line that faces north, and then move 40 degrees towards the east. The second bearing would be denoted as follows, and would be pronounced as 65 degrees west of north. Once again, notice that we start on the line facing north and move towards the west, 65 degrees, and stop. The third bearing would be denoted as follows, and it would be pronounced as 70 degrees east of south. And finally, the last bearing will be denoted as follows and it will be pronounced as 20 degrees west of south. If you're dealing with a problem that involves air navigation, the bearing of an airplane will usually be measured in degrees and clockwise from north. This could be confusing because it goes in the opposite direction of the standard angle convention learned in your math courses. For example, if these same bearings represented the direction of an airplane, they would be denoted as follows. The first vector would have a bearing of 40 degrees. The second vector would have a bearing of 295 degrees. And the third vector would have a bearing of 110 degrees. And the last vector would have a bearing of 200 degrees. All right, let's go over a couple of examples. A boat travels 72 miles on a course of bearing 27 degrees east of north, and then changes its course to travel 37 miles at 55 degrees east of north. How far north and how far east has the boat traveled on this 109 mile trip? All right, we can go ahead and solve this problem by using vectors to represent each of the two bearings with the magnitude of each vector representing the distance traveled. We can figure out how far north and how far east the boat traveled by finding the resulting vector and using its components to determine how far the boat traveled. All right, for the first 72 mile trip, we go ahead and start at the origin and draw a vector that starts north and moves towards the east at an angle of 27 degrees as follows. This bearing represents the first 72 mile trip. Let's denote this vector as vector v. Now. For the next trip, we need to draw the cardinal directions on the tip of vector v and use it to draw the next bearing. In this case, we once again start at the direction facing north and move 55 degrees towards the east as follows. Let's label this vector as vector u. Now that we have both vectors, we can go ahead and find the components of each vector and then add the vectors component wise in order to find the components of the resulting vector. Looking at the diagram, we see that we can use either the 27 degree angle or 63 degree angle to find the components of vector v. And we can use either 55 degrees or 35 degrees to find the components of vector u. It really does not matter which angle you use as long as you apply the trigonometric ratios correctly. Using 63 degrees for vector v, we obtain the following expression for the components. And using 35 degrees for vector u, we obtain the following for the components. Now it is just a matter of finding the resulting vector by adding vector v and u component wise. Doing that, we obtain 63 miles for the x component and 85 miles for the y component. So the boat traveled 63 miles towards the east 
and 85 miles towards the north. All right, let's go over the next example. A person is riding in a hot air balloon. For the first hour and a half, the wind current is a constant 22 miles per hour in the direction 37.5 degrees east of north. Then the wind current changes to 18.5 miles per hour and heads the balloon in the direction 52.5 degrees east of south. If this continues for another two hours, how far is the balloon from its starting point? What is the bearing of the balloon from its starting point? Similar to the previous problem, let's first draw a diagram to get a visual of the movements of this air balloon. Let's start with the first bearing. We know that this bearing will be 37.5 degrees east from north. Now we need to figure out the distance that this balloon travels in this particular direction. We know from the problem that the balloon will travel at 22 miles per hour for an hour and a half. We can easily find the distance traveled by using the classical distance equals rate times time formula. Computing the distance for this first trip, we obtain 33 miles. Let's go ahead and label this vector as vector v. Then the balloon changes direction and will now move at a bearing of 52.5 degrees east of south. So we draw the cardinal directions on the head of the first vector. From here, we start south and move towards the east at an angle of 52.5 degrees. Next, we need to find the distance traveled on this second trip. This time around, the balloon is moving at 18.5 miles per hour for two hours. Once again, we make use of the formula, obtaining 37 miles. Let's call this vector vector u. At this point, it is just a matter of adding both vectors v and u component-wise. Let's first find the components of each vector. Using the 37.5 degree angle, we obtain the following expression for the components of vector v. And using the 52.5 degree angle, we obtain the following expression for the components of vector u. Notice that the y component is negative, since it is pointing towards the negative y axis. Next, we go ahead and add vector v and vector u component wise. Doing that, we obtain the following. Finally, we go ahead and find the magnitude of the resulting vector, which is approximately equal to 49.6 miles. We can easily find the direction by using the components of the resulting vector by using inverse tangent. Doing that, we obtain 4.23 degrees. This angle represents the angle that the vector makes with the positive x axis. We need to take 90 degrees and subtract this angle to obtain the requested bearing. Doing that, we obtain 85.8 degrees east from north. All right, let's go over the final example. An airplane is traveling at a fixed altitude with a negligible wind factor. The airplane is traveling at a speed of 500 miles per hour with a bearing of 330 degrees. As the airplane reaches a certain point, it encounters wind with a velocity of 70 miles per hour in the direction 45 degrees east of north. What are the resulting speed, ground speed, and direction of the airplane? All right, in this problem, the path and speed of an airplane is being altered due to wind. This is similar to the way in which a boat's path and speed can be altered by water current. Because of this wind, we need to find the true course or track of the plane. This is nothing more than the direction of the resulting velocity of the plane and wind. We also want to find the ground speed of the plane. This would be equal to the magnitude of the resulting velocity. Note that speed refers to the magnitude of the velocity vector. In physics, these two quantities are different but related to each other, with speed being a scalar and velocity being a vector. Okay, like always, let's start by drawing a diagram. Since this is an air navigation problem, the bearing will be measured from the north clockwise. So a bearing of 330 degrees will be represented as follows. This is also equivalent to 120 degrees measured from the positive x axis. Next, we go ahead and draw the vector representing the wind velocity. In this case, it will point 
45 degrees east of north. Now it is just a matter of finding the components of each velocity. For the components of the velocity of the plane, I will use the 120 degree angle. This will take care of the negative and positive signs on the components automatically. Finding an expression for the components, we obtain the following. And doing the same for the wind velocity, we obtain the following. Next, we go ahead and add the vectors component wise. Doing that, we obtain the following for the resulting velocity. The final step is to find the magnitude and direction. In this case, the magnitude will be approximately equal to 522.5 miles per hour, and the direction will be equal to 67.4 degrees after using inverse tangent. But we need to adjust this angle. Adjusting the angle and using the standard conventions used in air navigation, we obtain 337.4 degrees. So the new speed of the airplane will be 522.5 miles per hour at a bearing of 337.4 degrees. All right, and this ends the two-dimensional vector series. In our next series of videos, we will go over three-dimensional vectors.